Anwar Uddin is the current manager of Sporting Bengal United. During a successful football career starting at West Ham United in 2001, Uddin played for Bristol Rovers, Barnet and Dakenham and Redbridge. I first interviewed Anwar when he was a spring chicken, an FA Youth Cup winner at West Ham United. And since then he has done very well for himself, becoming the first footballer of Bangladeshi origin to play professional football in England. At Dagenham and Redbridge, Anwar became also the first British Asian to captain a football club in the top four divisions of English football. Welcome to the show, Anwar. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. What is the highlight of your career? Wow. I mean, just listening to you talk about some of the highlights there sort of makes me feel like it was in another life. It felt like a long time ago. But um, I had a lot of success. The FA Youth Cup win was fantastic. Um, Upton Park, Full House. But for me, when I went to Dagenham, I had a little bit of a, an injury at Bristol Rovers for a long time. And I got to a point where I considered maybe giving up football because it was that bad. So I went to Dagenham, came home. And two years later, we won the uh, conference title. So, and as captain. So for me, it was a fantastic achievement just to get back to where I thought I belong in the Football League. Did you ever consider playing for Bangladesh? You know what, it was interesting because throughout my career I always had people say to me, are oh, you going to play for the national team? Um, I had some contact with the national team towards the end of my career, but the problem then was, you know, playing for a League Two side, international breaks, the Premier League players have time off, but for lower league players, if you play in the Asian continent, in Africa, you have to go away whilst your team's playing. So a lot of the tournaments, for example, would be a two, three week uh, tournament and I would have to miss you know, six or seven games for Dagenham. Yes. And uh, being club captain, you know, striving for success in the cup, in the league. You know, when I asked my manager, um, Gaffer, any chance I can go to Bangladesh and play in the Maldives for, for four weeks? <laughs> you know, it was like, <laughs> really? Um, so it never kind of materialised. And, you know, the, the call-ups came towards the end of my career. If it had happened a lot earlier, I probably would have gone, you know, when I was at West Ham. Uh, and Bristol Rovers in my sort of early 20s. Um, so, yeah, it didn't really happen, but who knows, you know, maybe that relationship will, will, will happen uh, later on in life. You cut your early managerial teeth at a club like Barnet. Um, how does it feel now being in charge at Sporting Bengal? I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I was a, a senior pro at Barnet, um, was in a relegation zone. Martin Allen left the club and you know, it was sort of up to myself and Giuliano Grazioli to sort of take over. And no one really gave us a, a chance to stay up. So I thought it was a, an opportunity with nothing to lose. And I absolutely loved it. You know, I always loved playing, but then, you know, coaching a session, managing a team, getting three points. And we stayed up on the last day of the season. So it was a massive achievement for someone who was inexperienced, if you like. So I kind of got that managerial and coaching bug. Uh, and I was lucky because prior to that, throughout my career, I'd done all my coaching badges. I'm now on my A license, so I'm, I'm well qualified. And um, it was just a, it was a great experience. And um, I'm now at Sporting Bengal. I was at Morden and Tiptree in the Ryman um, yes. League last year. And uh, it's fantastic to be back here at my local team. Um, I'm at Sporting because I've got a, quite a full-on job, mm. uh, full-time at the Football Supports Federation and kick it out, I travel the country. So it kind of works well. It's hard work, because it's a lot of work, but it's just fantastic to, to, to be working with a club that I'm, I'm passionate about, because I've, it's been a part of my life, and I've started the academy at Sporting three years ago. So no, good times. How was it like working alongside a non-league legend, Giuliano Grazioli? Yeah, it was good. I mean, he, again, he's someone that made his name in the FA Cup, but again, someone who has got more to offer. A lot of players. I've got so much experience playing the game at different levels. You know, going into that coaching uh, situation is great because they've got so much they can give to the younger players. And he was great to work with. Um, again, he's come out of the game because, you know, when you're a manager and a coach, I think the shelf life is really, really small. You know, you can be a manager for six months. I think the average term now is around two years. So it's a, it's a tough uh, position to be in, but an enjoyable one. What is the Football Supporters Federation? So we are a democratic fans organisation. We have over 600,000 members. So we're almost like a union for fans. Um, our membership is free to join. So anyone who's, who's, who's watching, please join up, look at the FSF, see what we're about. Uh, we want to give fans a voice. Um, football is massive in this country and fans, everyone loves football. We've got so many people in this country that go and watch football, live football. We've got so many pe people in this country that watch Match of the Day, watch 
put one sky, talk about it all the time. And for us, it's about making sure that those fans are treated well, are looked after, and are given a voice. So we have campaigns, for example, around ticket pricing. I lead on the Fans for Diversity campaign, which in short is trying to make football as inclusive as possible. Everyone should be able to embrace football. Who's the best manager you've played under and why? Wow. Um, Harry Redknapp was, was interesting, uh, really old school, really traditional. Uh, but I'd have to say John Steele, simply because I was with him for two years at Bristol Rovers and six years at Dagenham. And um, he's got a very unique way of managing. But with him, his man management skills are fantastic. You know, it's not about the team. It's about the individuals. He knows what your wife's name is. He knows how many children you have. He knows what makes you work best and what things you don't like. Not just one player. He knows that about everyone. And I think if you have a manager or anyone that you work with that takes a kind of a personal interest in your life and, and helps you with other things around um, in, your, in your family life, and, and that is great. Because you, you go the extra mile for a manager like that. Being an uncompromising stopper on the field, who's the toughest opponent you've faced? Wow. Uh, been fortunate. I mean, when, when I was younger, being at West Ham, we had the uh, really fortunate to play kind of against the top players, you know, behind closed doors, doors games and the youth cups in the, in the reserves. You know, I've played against teams like Arsenal, Dennis Burkamp, Mark Overmars, Ian Wright, players like that you almost can't really do anything about. They're just that good. But um, I'd have to say playing against Frank Lampard in training, for example, Joe Cole, fantastic players, but Frank Lampard was someone that worked so hard. Um, no surprise to me, you know, how well and how far he went in his career because he simply worked harder than absolutely anyone other than that. So this is a big lesson for any wannabe footballers or anybody aspiring to play football at a decent level. Um, taking someone like Frank Lampard, for example. Yeah, most definitely. Sure. Because I think a lot of people look at goals or England appearances. But what people don't see is that consistent uh, standard every single year. And when I was at West Ham, he was, he, he, that was something that st st really stood with me. Because you know a lot of players, I didn't have the skill or the technical ability that uh, the most had. But I worked hard, as hard as I could, and that's what Frank Lampard did. But the thing is with him as well, he had the work rate, but he also had the skill, determination, and he went on to be a Chelsea legend. So would you say that all the players you've been in contact with, played alongside, those who have been your colleague during your football career, would he be the hardest trainer? Most that definitely. You've... Most definitely the hardest trainer. He just, you know, if he'd had a day off, he'd come in and train with a youth team. You know, and I think as a young player, that's a massive uh, lesson to learn because, you know, when you're at West Ham and you're 18, 19, you think that, you know, you're going to be the next best thing. Yes. But you've also got so much to learn. And a lot of younger players nowadays, you know, yes, you might play, for, you know, be the best in your school team, best in your, your district team. You might play for a, a Premier League side, but there's still so much more and so much more you can achieve and so much more you can, you can become. And the only way you're going to do that is through practice and hard work. And... It's silly, but someone like him kind of um, highlighted that for me because other players that I've played with, you know, fantastic, uh, sort of almost raw, natural ability. Joe Cole was amazing, so skillful, and it just the game like him and Rio Ferdinand. The game was almost sort of too easy, really elegant. They saw things ahead of other people, but you know, people like Frank Lampard, the work rate was fantastic. So I think for me, I've played with some fantastic players across you know across the pyramid from all the way down to Premier League down to the bottom but it's the same traits in people mm. that I see that are the better players it's work rate determination you know self-criticism you know you can tell these players that okay you need to improve on this and that and they will and they won't tell you that you're wrong and they're right so it's hard work hard work is key you've enjoyed lifting silverware in your career this is something that millions of youngsters people who want to make a career for themselves in football can only dream of how was it like to a very early on in your career, lift the FA Youth Cup and then also winning promotion via the playoffs with uh, the Daggers. Yeah, you know, I think everyone's dream is to walk up the Wembley steps and lift a trophy, and I've done that. Um, and it was a bit surreal, really, like the whole day. People say to me always, you know, oh, what did you do afterwards? Did you celebrate? And I was absolutely knackered. I didn't even play much that year because I was injured. But when we li you lift a trophy and, like, one game, a playoff final, you know, at the championship, we was in League Two. One game can almost dictate the future of a club. You know, we won, we went into League One, the highest the club's ever been. 
massive game. You know, the championship final, they say, is like the most lucrative game ever. You know, you win, you're in that, the Premier League, you know, the promised land. So, but to do that, like to lift a trophy at Wembley and like to see yourself on a big screen, that it's like, it, it was a little bit surreal, but I think it's, you know, it's a combination of hard work and you know, throughout your career, I'm really fortunate because there's so many players that I know that have had 10, 15 year careers and never really won anything yes. because it's difficult. I mean, every year you look at the highest level of the game, it's the same clubs that win things, really. You know, your Man United, your Arsenal's, your Chelsea's, your Liverpool's, you know, players that play for like the mediocre teams or lower league teams. To winning something's hard. So when you do, you've just got to cherish every moment of it. People will be forgiven for thinking that football is just about glamour and millions and riches. But we know, as someone like yourself, who's progressed through the ranks from a very young age onwards, exactly how much effort needs to be put into grassroots in terms of developing players, but also engaging with diversity of fans? I think it's really important. I think there's enthusiasm everywhere you go. You know, you go to any city in this country, there's people playing on the streets. You know, when I was young, I kicked the ball around in Stepney Green. I was dodging traffic to play football. Nowadays, there are better facilities, but it's important that you have role models within the community to help because, um, and, and for example, East London is fantastic for that. You've got a lot of people here in East London that were former players, people that maybe didn't work out for them, but they can give back to the younger generation. And I think if that happens, which it is, We'll see an influx of Asian players uh, coming through because, let's be honest, I signed for West Ham 15 years ago and was one of the first. I've been asked the same question for 15 years. When are we going to see the next? How many Asian players are going to be involved in the next 10 years? And it's been minimal, you know, and that's quite sad because I, I honestly thought after myself, there'd be, you know, the conveyor belt would switch on. We'll see loads of Asian players across the leagues, but it's not really happened. But it's good to see a couple players now kind of throughout the leagues and I'm hoping that with all our work at grassroots, all the, you know, all the dads that are putting in time, taking their sons to training and daughters for that, we'll see more representation across the leagues and that will have a knock-on effect uh, around the stadiums. You've kindly agreed to take on the gaffer's role mm. at Sporting Bengal United. What are your plans to take the club forward and on to bigger and better things, hopefully? Yeah, I mean, for me, it was, um, I looked at the club over the last few years. They've not done too well. Um, I run the academy and the academy sessions run from six to eight at Stepney Green. We've got kids from six to 14, fantastic, fantastic facilities, great coaching, you know, Manic and Emerald doing fantastic work there. But the first team, you know, these kids in about three or four years time are gonna be ready to play senior level football. Yes. But the first team were a team that were finishing bottom of the league with, you know, a really low amount of points. So for me, it was about, okay, well, let's start from the bottom up. You know, we've got an academy now, kids can come in at any age, good coaching, good facilities, but where do they go? You want them to go or aspire to play for Sporting's first team. That's what you want. You want a 14 or 15 year old say, I want to play for the first team one day. So now we have got really good coaches as part of my staff. I've got a physio, a sports scientist, a goalkeeper coach. So I'm trying to do things professionally. And I think you've seen uh, in our results that a fantastic FA Vars run. We're doing okay in the league. We're in the quarterfinals of the League Cup. But that's secondary. For me, I've got players that turned up from a local area in the summer that if I'm honest with you, their technique was poor. They couldn't even kick a ball, you know, to a level of, of standard I've played at. And obviously they're not going to because I've played at a very high level, but the improvement in some of the players, and that's just because of a professional environment, just because they've got a great attitude, they turn up every Tuesday and Saturday and they want to work and want to learn. And we're trying to provide them with that learning environment to make them better. Um, and if you have that and you've got a, an attitude to want to learn, you know, that's the recipe for success. And well, it's been fascinating talking to you. And we wish you every success with the future. Thank you very much. If you would like further information on FSF and what Anwar does with the organisation, we are providing further details at the bottom of the page. I'll see you all this time next week. Thank you for watching The Sports Show.